Hey friends, in the previous video we learned about what SwellKit is, but in this one I'm going to take my time to explain the entire SwellKit project structure, including every file. I don't know about you, but when I'm learning something, I want at least a high level understanding of what makes it work. Understanding what makes SwellKit work is going to give you more confidence using it as you get more familiar with it, like getting to know a friend. And there's a lot of people that are newer to development and don't even know about these files and they're going to be the same across most JavaScript projects. I'm going to show you how to set up SwellKit yourself without a CLI, but don't worry, we're going to use off-the-shelf parts instead of doing SwellKit from scratch. After that, I'm going to walk you through the SwellKit CLI and explain every file so you at least understand the purpose of it. It. And if you're one of those weird people that want to understand how SwellKit works under the hood, well, I'm that weird type of person that made learn how SwellKit works that you can read or watch. So you can go here, you can get the popcorn, or you can read it or watch it. Alright, so let's get started. I'm just going to create a new tab so we don't get distracted, and I'm going to open a new terminal. And to be honest with you, it's been a while since I actually created a project from scratch because I'm so used to using some CLI, but basically, in the post I use npm, but honestly, if you want to save your hard drive, please get set up pnpm because it's going to reuse packages for your project so it doesn't destroy your hard drive and I really love it. So I'm going to use pnpm here, but the commands almost map one to one with npm, but it's up to you. So I can say pnpm init, and basically it's going to create this JSON file, so let me just close the terminal, and here in the sidebar here is a package JSON, and I just like to remove most of this junk, we're going to add scripts ourselves, Basically, we could have created this file by hand, but basically that's how you do it. Save this. So let me just open the terminal, and we're going to need some packages. So what is the minimum required amount of packages for SoilKit? And it's surprisingly a low amount. So there's four packages we need to install, I think. So let's go. We can say pnpmi. We need to install them as a development dependencies. Uh, so you can already see. Here is vit. Then we need SoilKit itself. SoilKit is just a vit plugin, so that's why we need vit. And then we're also optionally going to install the adapter and Svelte for the component framework. So I'm just going to install it like this, and this should populate our package JSON. Give it a second. And you can already see the blazingly fast speed of pnpm. And this is just because I saved this file, but if I auto format, I'm just going to prettify everything. So let me just close the terminal so we don't get distracted. And at the top, I'm going to declare that we're going to use a type module. And you might see this in SwellKit projects. We're definitely going to see it because SwellKit uses native JavaScript or ECMAScript modules. And what it basically means, if I go here, so that's basically this syntax. So you can say import package from package. And in the past, this wasn't supported by the browser. So you needed a bundler to transpile this. So it understands it using the old common JS or require syntax. So if you're familiar, maybe something like this require and then you do this and basically this is using the native javascript modules that's part of the spec and that's something that browsers understand okay i'm just going to close this and basically i'm just going to add a type here and i'm going to say module here you can see it offers us common js or module another thing worth mentioning is if you're using native javascript modules and you want to use something that's common js you can just suffix it with the .cjs type in your project and it's going to work. So that's great, but we're going to need some scripts to run the development mode to be able to build the project in preview. And basically, scripts are just a way to run some script from your file system, usually from the node modules folder. So I can go here, I can just say scripts, and then we're going to add one for development, and then we can just say vit dev, we can add one for building the project with build. And then let's add one for preview. So we can say with preview. And let me just save and this is going to auto format. By the way, if you want auto formatting in your editor, you can go to your VS Code settings and enable format on save. So if you're using Prettier, it's going to do everything for you basically. Or you can look it up how to do it for the editor you're using. And basically that's it. We just need to do a couple of more things. So SwellKit requires a vit config at the root of the project. In the previous part, I talked about how SwellKit is a vit plugin and I'm going to show you that. So let me just close this file. I'm going to open the sidebar. I'm going to create a new file, which is going to be named vit config.js. Let's just keep it simple. I'm going to close the sidebar. So let me just import the SwellKit plugin that's exposed 
from swell.js kit with. So here we can also include some JS doc types. We can say type import vit and we can just say here user config so we just get auto completion since we're not using typescript for this file so here is the magic sauce so we can just say const config now we specify vit plugins and what vit plugin we want to use svelkit of course and that's basically it this is the beating heart of svelkit and we just need to export the config export default config Let's just save it, and that's basically it. You can also optionally include a swell config file so you can get pre processing and adapter to output your project. And I'm going to explain what it means in a second, so let's do that because we can. So we can say swelt config.js, and now I'm going to import the adapter reinstall so we can say from swell.js adapter auto. And now we're going to import the pre processor, so we can say vite pre-process and it already auto completed this for me, which is awesome. So let me just include the JS doc here. You can say type import is going to come from swell.js kit. And from here, we just want the config. And now we can also give it a config like we did for read. So we can say cons config. So we're going to declare a pre-processor. So you already see how we get great auto completion. And then we're going to say vite preprocess, which we imported. And now options for swell kit, we can say kit, we can specify an adapter, and we can just use the adapter. And also don't forget to export your config, export default config, save it, and that's it. So let me explain what these things are. A preprocessor transforms your .swell file before passing it to the compiler. In this case, vite preprocess handles TypeScript, PostCSS, and SCSS or SAS some of the language flavors, which you can read more about in the Svelte documentation. So if you go here to integrations, it tells you the same thing I did right now for preprocessors. As you can see here in the Vite preprocess section, Vite plugin Svelte offers a Vite preprocess feature, which utilizes Vite for preprocessing. And you also have some other fun preprocessor you can use or whatever. And basically, this is a really fascinating thing. You can, for example, make preprocessors that maybe turn your .svelte files into slidex or whatever. That's actually a fun little project I worked on previously, and I might make a video on that in the future. I talked about it previously, but an adapter is used to adapt your SvelteKit app to the deployment target. You could write your own adapter, but the supported adapters include Cloudflare pages. So you can go here, you can host your SvelteKit app, no problem with zero configuration. Netlify. Awesome host, Vercel, awesome host. You can also do Node.js. You can use a static adapter if your entire app is a static site. You can even use community adapters to deploy to target platforms like Dino, for example. But all right, we're not done yet. So let me just go to the new tab so it's not distracting. I'm going to close this. So now Svelkit expects a HTML page template with placeholders that Svelkit uses and replaces for your pages. So inside of here, I'm going to create a new file, which is a nifty trick. So I'm going to say source in VS Code, and then I'm going to say app HTML. That's going to create a folder source with a file app.html inside. Let me just close the sidebar briefly. And now I'm going to commit a crime and write awful markup, but thanks to browsers understanding and being able to build proper HTML pages, this is going to work fine. So you can just say head, and now we can use swellkit.head. So I can close it like this. And then we're also going to need a body. So we're also going to say swellkit.body. And let me complete this. I'm going to save this. And this is almost it, but we need to do one more thing. And that's adding a route that's going to be the first page someone sees when they visit the site. So I'm going to open the sidebar again. Inside of source, I'm going to, again, do new file. I'm going to create a folder, routes. And I'm going to create a special file plus page svelte. So you can see here is the route folders and the file we created. So I'm just going to use a h1 tag and I'm going to say hello. I'm going to open the terminal now, clear everything. So now we can run development mode and everything should work. So we can say pnpm run dev and awesome. Our port started on localhost 5173. And if you're curious, why is it using this weird number? And apparently the V developers are comedians because you might have noticed it, but 5173 is lead speak for Vite 
or it can even spell out sight. So it's really hilarious in my opinion, but yeah, basically that explains it and it's really interesting. But okay, enough talking. Let's just go to that port. So you can say localhost 5173 and everything should work. And it does, awesome. But we also get some one error, which is the favicon. So you can also include a static folder here. You can include the favicon, but I'm not going to do that. So let me just close the terminal. And one thing worth talking about is also that Swellkit creates a special .swelt-kit folder that has all your generated files as you work on your project. So you can ignore or delete this folder because it's going to regenerate each time you run dev or build. And this is how, for example, the magic sauce works for generating types for your pages, which you can find in this folder. And this is usually going to be the output of your project. And you're going to see a types folder here. You can see the type generated right here. So basically that's it for Svelkit from scratch. And in the next section, I'm going to show you how to use the Svelkit CLI, where I'm going to explain every file and folder. All right, so I deleted everything so we can start fresh. And here we're going to use the recommended way of scaffolding a Svelkit project, which is using the Svelkit CLI. So I'm going to open the terminal. And if you're following these steps along, and if you're new to this, you're going to need Node.js at least, so you can run this type of commands. You can also get PNPM, or you can use NPM if you prefer. So how do we scaffold a Svelte project? Well, it's really simple. So I can just say PNPM create in my case, and I can just say PNPM create Svelte. And this is going to start an installation wizard. So it's going to ask you, where should we create your project? I just want to create it in the same folder. So I'm just going to press dot or leave it blank, which I'm going to do. And now it asks you what you want to do. So you can get the demo app, which has a lot of examples. You can create a skeleton project that's empty, barely has anything. And then you can create a project if you're working on a library, but I'm going to pick the skeleton project. I'm going to pick TypeScript, but if you want, you can use JavaScript. So I'm going to pick the TypeScript syntax. We really want ESLint. We really want Prettier. And also going to say yes to everything basically so I can explain it. We want yes for Playwright. Vtest, let's just say yes. And then when this is all done, you have to install the packages. So you can say pnpmi, and that should take a second. Great, so I'm going to clear the terminal. And now you can run your development server and you should see that everything works fine. So we can go here, same as before. We can say localhost 5173. And this is basically it. I like how the bare bones project doesn't have a lot of things, so you have to delete a bunch of files and etc. But in this case, I'm just going to close the terminal. And let me just talk about first about the things we selected. So first one was ESLint, right? And if you're not familiar, ESLint is like a spell checker for your code that gives you useful warnings in your editor from checking your code for problems like accessibility. So let me just see if I can quickly show this. If I go to routes, page, and for example, I'm just going to delete everything. Let me just do something that it doesn't like. So we can say whatever. And you can see here we get some warning and we can hover over it. So ESLint is saying accessibility, pound is not a valid ref attribute. And this is how Svelke really leads you to the right way with accessibility and other useful warnings. But in this case, I can just delete this and close it, so whatever. And you're going to discover that ESLint and TypeScript make a great duo, ensuring you don't do something goofy. Next, let's talk about Prettier. So Prettier is an opinionated code formatter. You might find it does some things you don't like, but it's a great trade-off considering you don't have to think about formatting your code and it's going to be consistent for everyone else working on the project. I also recommend you enable format and save, which you can look up how to do for your editor. But again, let me just open this file so we can say hrun for example hello world and i can just press save and this is going to get auto formatted and now you don't have to ever think about how to format your code and etc because prettier just does it for you let me close this file and let's talk about playwright which is interesting so playwright is used for end-to-end -end testing and end-to-end -end testing might be vague what is that so basically you can test how your user might use the site using a real browser and you can check, for example, if some content is showing or test your registration or checkout process. Say, for example, on Joy of Code, I have posts and I just want to test if those posts are visible on the page. So I can basically just click around and see if it works. And next, let's talk about another testing tool, which is Vtest, which is a blazing fast unit testing framework. 
So vTest, as it says, is used for unit testing. And what does that mean? That means you're testing one unit of your code. So for example, you can use Playwright to test your site using a real browser and see if your content works like I gave you in that example, but you would use vTest to test the input and output of the function responsible for sorting the content in some order, right? So that's basically what a unit test is. And I also want to show you that in the examples. So for example, here is the test, we talked about Playwright, so basically this is just going to open a browser in the background, which is going to run headless, but you can also specify so you can see the browser and what's going on on the page. And this just checks if index page has accepted H1. So that's basically awesome. And here is an example, I believe in source index test test. Here is an example using vtest. So this is a unit test. You can see it checks if sum works. So if the function sums up one and two to equal three. But all right, let's look at the beautiful tree we inherited from scaffolding the Svelte project. Let me just close this. And I'm just going to close all of these tabs so they're not distracting. And let me just close this too. So the first folder is the one created by Svelkit, which is dot Svelkit. We already talked about this, but it's a folder generated by Svelkit and it's safe to remove. So we can just ignore this for now. And if you're not familiar with the node modules folder, here's basically where all your packages go. So here lives Svelkit, Vit, and etc. your binaries. If you run something like PNPX, this is going to get stored here in your binaries. So you can run it without having to install the package globally, if you ever done that. Let me close the node module. So let's look at something more interesting, which is the source folder. So this is the heart of your project. So here we have routes, which Svelkit knows to map to a page. So whatever you create here, you're going to see in the browser. There's also going to be another folder here, which you're going to use to store shared components, which is going to be lib. So you can create that if you want. And this is also aliased in Svelkit as a special import. So you don't have to do that convoluted trailing where you do dot dot and then slash, etc. You can just say dollar sign lib and it's going to know the path to it. And you can also specify your own aliases. So for example, you can have an alias to your styles, alias to your components and etc. Okay, let me just cancel that out. Here are some files that are specific more to TypeScript. So if you don't use TypeScript, you can just ignore this. But if I open app.dts, this is used to add some type information for some special Svelkit objects which we're going to talk about in a later part. So you don't really have to think about this and I can just close this. We already talked about app.html. It's a template used by Svelkit for your pages. And here, let me just show you. So here it uses the favicon, some meta tags, and this is really interesting. So it also has for you data preloading, which is on hover. So it starts fetching the data on your page in advance. It's Svelkit knows thanks to code splitting, what the CSS and JavaScript is required for the next page. And here you might see something interesting. Why is this Svelkit body inside of this tag? And this is basically to avoid some problems with extensions that inject themselves into the body. So this is just how Svelkit avoids that problem. All right, so we can close this file. And I already showed you the vtest one, so we can skip that. So here is the static folder and here you would place your images or whatever you have like favicon. So basically it's nothing special. Here are your tests. So I already showed you this for Playwright. You can place your test, whatever it is, because vTest is going to scan your entire project. So you can put your test besides your component or in one folder, that's really up to you. Svelkit really has no strict opinions on this. So we talked about ESLint and here is the ESLint config file and it looks intimidating and you really don't have to care about anything inside here. What you do might want to know is that you can extend this so you can add your rules, you can disable rules and etc. Let me just close this. So I have a git ignore file. If you're not familiar with this, this is basically going to ignore files and folders you specify when you push your project to GitHub. For example, you might not want to leak your environment variables and etc. But yeah, here is another interesting file dot npmrc. So this is a config file for npm. And it has this option here, engine strict true. And basically what this means is that it's going to refuse to install packages that aren't compatible with the version of Node.js you're using. But yeah, that's basically it. So we also have a prettier file here, so you can choose your preferences. You can say use tabs. For example, I prefer not using semicolons. So you can go here and you can say semi false. And then you can also pick some other options. Here are some good defaults in my opinion. Another interesting thing is if you go to package JSON, let me just go here. So it would be really annoying since you change this to not use semicolons and we have to open every file and press save and format. But 
instead of doing that, you can go here. You can just run the command to format your entire project, which is right here. So you would just run format and this would run prettier for you. Same for linting, so you can check your projects for errors. You can also run unit test and etc. Here are some really useful scripts for you to use. But yeah, let me just close these files. And you already might know about package.json, but basically this is where all your package information is being kept, scripts, and etc. And even if you wanted all of these gnarly dot files here, which is unavoidable in doing modern JavaScript development, where you can have all of this inside your package.json if you want, which would be kind of unmaintainable, but that also obviously depends on you. And then we have our playwright config, which you would learn from reading the documentation because this really has nothing to do with Svelte. They just really make this setup easy for you to configure playwright. And that is really fascinating. So I can close this. So you have your log file here. If you don't know what this is, you can lock your package versions to a specific file. So when someone else downloads the project, they're going to get the same version as you have, so that avoids issues. And of course, what we never do when we start a new project or whatever is actually read the readme, which explains almost everything. So this shows you creating the project, how to install the packages, how to start it, and how to build it. But yeah, basically read your readmes, right? So here we already looked at it, but here is the swell config that we did by hand previously, and it's exactly the same, nothing special. So we can also see the vid config here, which is the same as before. It also has some extra things for tests to include some files, nothing special. So you can just close this. And here is the TS config file. So basically this extends the Svelkit TypeScript configuration file. You can also change this however you want. You can enable path aliases here. It shows you some useful information. But that's basically it. If you're newer to development, you might be hearing some of these things for the first time, but you can ignore most of them, to be honest. And there's really a lot of junk in these files and it really can be avoided because that's how mostly modern web development is done. And this is like nothing compared to a real project where you're going to have even more files. So for deployment, you might have a Docker config and etc. So that really gets out of hand quick. So there's really not the fault of Svelkit, but just the general JavaScript ecosystem. So I hope this gave you a better understanding of these configuration files in general, because you're going to see them in every JavaScript project but now you're a certified Swellkit connoisseur. All right, so don't forget to like and subscribe and you can find my Patreon in the description. Thank you for watching and catch you in the next one. Peace.